Okay everyone, today we're going to talk about what this has to do with chestnuts, chemistry, and the first president of Israel. <laughs> Keith, I'll leave you to it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this would go on your arm. Oh, it's there we go. Armband. This is from 1917, so it looks really quite well preserved, but it's actually quite an old object and it was made for a very particular purpose. During the First World War there was uh, an effort to try to make maximum use of all the raw materials produced in the country. And in this particular case, it's horse chestnuts. They decided to use chestnuts in the war? Oh. You're right. Yeah, you come on, come on. We'll stop for a sec. See, this is a working place, everyone. <laughs> We've had to stop recording because there are archives that need to be retrieved. Come on, Rupert. There are researchers that need documents. Oh, look. This is the request that has come from someone upstairs, and Rupert has come down to get it. It's the real thing. <laughs> Okay, Keith, are these soldiers wearing this or who's, get, who's no. collecting the chestnuts? No, of course, the soldiers are all off to the front, 1917. So who do you get to uh, collect your chestnuts for you? Well, who normally collects conkers? You get your school kids to do it. So Boy Scouts, Girl Guides, local communities. The Royal Society decided it was going to send them all out there with their armbands on to collect horse chestnuts. So this is a Royal Society thing. This sort of esteemed mm. science society of the time has said, all right, we're going to send out all the kids to go and get chestnuts yep. and, and feed the chestnuts to horses? Or Well, that was the idea, but it kind of didn't work. So the Royal Society had to switch to Plan B. Or Plan C. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, what, and, what, and what was that? You like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. What was Plan C? What happened? Well, they decided that they would try to break down the horse chestnuts to see what kind of useful products they could get from them. And there was someone already working on this problem. There was a fermentation method for uh, producing material from starchy foods. Uh, that was Kain Weizmann. He was looking at this because uh, the products of that fermentation could be used for munitions production. Now Weizmann is a name that some people may be familiar with. He, he went on to do other things? He did. I mean, he was politically active as well as a, a very good scientist. And he ended up becoming the first president of Israel. Now, we've got some letters and documents mm. to go with this that helps kind of flesh out the story. Yeah. You, know, you know I love a good letter. Here, Here we, we go. Are. What's the box? I like my box numbers. Uh, this is MS 527. MS 527. Not very neatly written. No, it's OK on there. That's my hand. That's you, is it? <laughs> That's me. And who's that? That's just some cowboy that came along. Yeah, right. stick a big label on it. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So let's take uh, these few letters off the, the top. Okay. Here. Okay, Keith, we have a letter here. It's from a gentleman. And this gentleman has enclosed an armband. And he's written it in to Hardy here at the Royal Society. The, f <laughs> the famous Hardy, famous mathematician. Why has he sent Hardy one of these armbands? What's going on? Well, it's, it's to, to explain the procedure that they're using. And, uh, of course, school children get massively enthusiastic about these things. Uh, they had to call out the police in Cambridge to protect their chestnut trees. And he's saying here that the, the lady next door is getting a bit annoyed about the school kids coming in and uh, knocking chestnuts off the trees, destroying the trees. So and they've the, incentivised the children, mm, but they've incentivised them too much. Just a little too well, yes. So the lady, the neighbour, she had some grounds for annoyance. So this is basically someone just whinging but providing an explanation of, of how they're going to solve this, this crack scientific problem. We have obviated this by the issue of the enclosed armlet to selected individuals at the schools. They're collecting nuts for like the war effort and someone's yeah. complaining saying, oh, don't touch my tree. Well, uh, I know. I mean, the war's a long way away, of course, and it's, it's a chestnut tree. So that's really interesting about the armbands, but it's these two letters that I find really interesting and a little bit historic. Let's start with this one here on top. So this is Lord Nathan, who's, who's running the, the Ministry of Munitions, and he's writing to Hardy uh, to discuss the use of horse chestnuts. Initially, they thought, for the production of alcohol. And then he goes on to say, I doubt whether the supplies would be sufficient for this purpose, but it is just possible that they could be used for the production of acetone, which is now being made at our factory at King's Lynn. He has written to the government, basically, and said, but you could make alcohol out of this, mm. like, like trying to be a helpful scientist. Yes. And then the guy 
from the Ministry of Munitions of War, Lord Nathan, mm -hmm. has written back and said, I don't think alcohol's the answer, but maybe we can get acetone from these chestnuts. I'm going to pass it on to Wiseman because he's a bit of a clever clogs. Now, this letter has been written by Wiseman himself, the man, the man who would go on to become the first president of Israel. And he's writing about horse. They're fighting a war and all these guys are doing is writing about horse chestnuts. <laughs> yep. what's, what's Wiseman said here? He realises that they've got quite a high carbohydrate content. And, and yes, possibly they might be able to use them in conjunction with other things to produce materials that would ultimately help the war effort. Did they end up making acetone from the horse chestnuts? They did, and we've got some nice uh, little uh, labels from the railways of the period where you could bag up your horse chestnuts in a sack, tie a, a label to it, and it would be freely delivered to the Admiralty or wherever else you wanted it to go, and it would be used uh, to help in munitions production. We start with nuisance children taking chestnuts from trees and being forced to wear these armbands to show that they're doing something they're supposed to do. And then we've got some of the most important people in the World War I effort writing to each other, coming up with how they're going to use these chestnuts yeah. to, to continue successfully fighting the war. And one of these scientists, as we said, also just so happened to go on to become the president of Israel, just because we love that kind of detail. Well, it wasn't as a result of his war effort. Uh, and, you know, he so impressed the British government that they ended up signing something called the Balfour Declaration, which started the state of, of Israel. So, I mean, it really was uh, uh, Boy Scouts helping uh, in a very odd kind of way uh, to produce a result that's, that's completely off the books, as, as it were. Love it. Now, Lieberman's widow loaned this painting to an exhibition here in Britain. So at the New Burlington Galleries in 1938, there was a, an answering exhibition, if you like. So this was something uh, on 20th century German art that included everybody, including artists like Lieberman. And it just was effectively saying, this is great stuff. 